I'm the greatest. Roshit, I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. It's Hi and welcome back to the Vavil Boxing Podcast with me, your host, George Priestman. I'm joined today by David Lawson-Cook. Just the two of us today reviewing the weekend of boxing that saw heavyweights new and old clash, as well as a couple of other big names fighting on the Friday night as well. But we'll jump straight in with Daniel Dubar versus Joe Joyce, with Joe Joyce getting the victory that sees him become the British, European and Commonwealth heavyweight champion. And it was an underdog win in the end with people, what people were saying before the fight, but just how impressive was Joe Joyce on the night, David? Well, he's fantastic, mate. I thought I was a bit shocked him being in the dog on the night, but it was absolutely brilliant. I thought his footwork, he, he stopped Daniel doing what he does. He, his footwork was brilliant, so Daniel couldn't land the big shots. His, his jab was amazing. Obviously, that was the thing that ended up, ended up ending the fight. He looked really, really sharp and I think he's proved a massive point when he gets that win. Yeah, he's proved that. I think he's proved everyone wrong there because everyone was saying Dubar, <laughs> Dubar early or Joyce late and we got Joyce late in the end. Um, a lot of people seem to be eating their own words because everyone called Dubar pretty much all the world champions like Cole Frampton. A lot of people, even when they said Joe Joyce, they were still leaning towards Dubar as well a little bit. So a massive win for him. Um, and to be honest, yeah, he took his he took his jab away from him, which was the most surprising element for me. I didn't think Joyce could do that. I thought Daniel's jab is is incredible, but he beat him to it and he just battered him all night long, really. And the, the shots he took as well, the chin he showed. I mean, that, it's not as if Daniel didn't have any any luck or any any good moments. You know, he had plenty of right hands and he looked when he put it on him, he looked dangerous. And a lot of, a lot of the heavyweights would have crumbled there, but Joe Joyce didn't, which shows that at 35, he's ready to take the next step. And just how important was it for Joe Joyce to have those experienced fights against the likes of Bryant Jennings and, and Stavern before this fight? I think that possibly played a part. He's obviously got a much longer amateur career as well. But as you said, a few weeks ago, I was thinking at 35, has, has Joyce, is the age going to catch up with him? But to be honest, but maybe with him turning pro so late, he looked really sharp in there. And I think, yeah, maybe them fights against the Vern and Jennings. And you've got you've got to look at the Bois as well. It's, it's a massive step up for him, that fight. He's, he's, he's only fought, really. His, his last fight was against Schneiders. But in the lockdown period. So, apart from... Well, Joyce from that is a massive step up. And I think, I think people maybe forgot about that. And uh, it's just going to be exciting what happens for them both next because obviously the bar being so young, you can go anywhere. But now with Joyce, he's got he's got the whole world at his feet. Got some very good fights lined up for him. I think everyone believed the hype a little bit too much of Dubois. I mean, I think I definitely did. I think a lot of other people did. And it was hard not to because he was knocking people out there right and center, and he looked he looked the part. You know, he was you know. He's, he couldn't be more into boxing if he tried you know he's literally the, the embodiment of a professional and you know the young the young lion coming after the the older the older fighter just seemed like it was the the obvious win but I mean everyone's ate the words and I thought Daniel ran out of ideas after round five to be honest I think that I think I remember watching it I think in first three Joe Joyce didn't really throw anything and I thought I was a little bit worried I thought he needs to throw something soon just to get Daniel off him and then he started to get his jab going and then Daniel round five or six, the swelling was really starting to come on and he just lost. Obviously, you can definitely going to lose something with the eye, but he just lost ideas and he didn't know what to throw anymore. The jab was gone and then the, that meant the right hand was gone and it just looked a little bit, yeah, lack of experience for me, um, which is no shame. But I mean, it, it could have been managed better by Frank Roy and maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself and <laughs> he's getting a lot of stick for saying that he he wanted his cash cow to win in Duvar and and, do, and Joyce has won now, which he, he didn't want to win, but he does he does he does uh, represent both, so he he's, he's okay on that front. But looking forward, I think he can get the I think he can get the big fights. I mean, I I, I won't want to see him in a anything other than a Usyk fight next, to be honest, for that world title. Yeah. If 
if possible. Because if he goes and fights someone a little bit dangerous, he could risk all the hard work and winning this fight. If he, if he goes and fights someone dangerous next and he loses, then that's his position gone. So Usyk for me, I think since they last fought, it was a, in 2016 when they were both amateur or whatever it was, it was they've come on leaps and bounds, both of them, especially Joe, you know, experience year by year. And I think he just, <laughs> it, it'd be a very, it'd just be a very good fight. And he would just, he would just try and catch Usyk all night. And I think his, his work rate and size. And if you watch the highlights of the actual fight, they did have, um, Joyce had quite a little bit of success when, you know, with them, when they started trading and Usyk didn't really like it that much. And we saw what Chazorva tried mm. to do and Joyce is a much bigger, fitter version. So that could be a great fight. I mean, do you think it is possible? I think it will all fall into place depending on Joshua is willing to vacate. I think maybe for the sake of getting the Fury fight on, he may have to. And I think that lines it perfectly for Joyce there. And I think it'd be a fight that used to good fancy. Someone that he's been in with before. But it's with Joyce as well, I've just seen his come up against the Bois, who many had as one of the biggest punches, up and coming punches in the game. And I think Joyce disheartened him by showing that he can take the shot. So it's a very dangerous fight for Usyk and one I definitely want to see. Yeah, and then for him to take that fight, you know, Usyk would fight, you know, a lot and much easier, well, not much easier, but an easier opponent than Fury or Joshua for a world title. So for him, it makes sense because he wants to be world champion. Yeah. So it makes sense. Then he could get the big fights after that if he does beat Joe Joyce. So it, it does make sense all round and... I don't see why not, to be honest. If, he, if Joshua vacates, I don't see why not. We don't, we don't see that fight next, to be honest. And I hope we do, because that'd be a, a fantastic spectacle. Yeah. Moving on to the, the Saturday, Sunday morning fight, obviously, Mike, jo- uh, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. By all accounts, it was a, it was a fairly good show, quite entertaining. Um, but it was just good to see two legends back in the ring. I, I didn't stay up, but saw the highlights and it was, it was a decent watch. You know what I, think? I thought it was a decent watch. Mike Tyson looked quite aggressive and when, yeah. when he's throwing those body shots and I thought he looked quite dangerous to be honest <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised obviously with the result the draw and the two belts being given to him afterwards like they'd almost prepared it but however I was really pleasantly surprised two great and to be fair to me, they both were really sharp for their age really sharp I thought Joy, Roy Jones was a popping his jab out, moving up to his old tricks. But Tyson looked really strong when he backed him up a few times. And people were putting it down a bit as a cash-in, but it was a good event, good to watch in the end, and got to be grateful for him to do it, really, haven't you? Yeah, I thought, I thought it was a pretty decent watch, to be honest. And <laughs> my Tyson still looks scary for me. <laughs> he still always will. Uh, would you like to see him in more oh, exhibition yeah. events going forward? I think it's for a good cause, isn't it? He said at the end in his interview after it, he wasn't about, uh, he'd rather do it in ex- exhibitions. He's become a humanitarian now and he wants to raise loads of money and that. So it's for a good cause. And if it was a good watch like on the weekend, then I don't see why not. Obviously, there's a lot of old legends that you could imagine seeing in there. Holyfield's been talked mm-hmm. about again. <laughs> it, it's not going to do the sport any harm, I suppose, is it? And if they're making money for a good cause, then why not? I think it's definitely better than seeing the YouTubers fire, if I'm being honest. So, <laughs> 100%, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just mention Jake Paul's knockout really quickly. I mean, he's he's <laughs> he's mouthing off a lot. He's calling out Conor McGregor. He's calling out KSI. I mean, the, the only fight I'd want to see for them is, is the KSI Jake Paul, just because it would bring even more. I mean, Logan Paul to KSI would, would brought so many eyes to the sport. This would bring even more even more because both yeah. of them are even more famous now and I mean that'd be a that'd be a fun build up it'd be a fun press tour it'd be a fun fight on the night and I think it'd be good beef as well so that's the only fight I want to see if they could go both of them both do music as well and Eddie Hearn said that he would he would definitely see that fight in 2021 so if we do great if not <laughs> I'm not really too bothered if he fights if it's not KSI but we don't you won't see Conor McGregor getting a ring with him that's for sure so <laughs> move on from that <laughs> um, so yeah Friday night we saw Tony Yoka come through with a points victory over Christian Hammer uh, I thought Christian Hammer showed pretty good heart and a good chin on the night he was, he was a pretty good opponent to, for a step up um, you know definitely came to fight you know it wasn't a fight where he just he just tried to stay away and not you know survive but he 
Tony Yoko did win pretty much every round. Um, I think that amateur that amateur pedigree comes through quite nicely at times when he's in his career so far. Obviously, he stops a lot of his opponents, but yeah, going with distance here in ten rounds was um, a good a good fight back for him because he's been out of the ring a while um, in terms of fighting good people. But if he can keep fighting people of his uh, his pedigree, I think he can he can really get get himself up there and really get himself up in those belt rankings because he he's only really ranked in one belt so far, but. What do you think of it? Did you see the highlights? What did you think of him? Yeah, I thought that it was good. It was a good sort of fight, to be fair. I thought I just said Hammer's game and he, he, he wasn't going to come in, just roll over. He never does. He's only been beat by Ortiz from Beckham and Fury in 10 years. So he's got a really, really solid pedigree. I thought he caused problems for Yoko on the inside. He tried to get in. He was tough, but it's a really good stepping stone for Yoko that you probably see Sat, ha, Hammer, the best person he's fought, a good solid pro. Took him 10, 10 rounds. It was, I think people expected him on Friday night to just go and blow him out of there. I think, to be honest, in my head, I, I did, but you have to look at the opponent that Hammer is. It was a really good test for him. And I was impressed with Yoka. I just said he'll be looking to make the steps further up now. I, I did, after, straight after the fight, I was thinking he's, he's with uh, Bob Barham, isn't he? and I think Bob Barham will be trying to push him on a lot quicker throughout this next year. I think beating Hammer is a good statement. I think he's going to have some good matches next year to be made for him. Yeah, I think mean, for me, I thought he wasn't, he's nowhere near the finished article for me. I think he needs, I think he needs at least two or three fights next year, even four if he could, if he could squeeze him in. I mean, probably not if he's fighting people of that sort of level, but I mean, I think he needs to fight a lot next year because he is 27, you know, he's not, He's not really young, but obviously in the fight game, he is young. But um, he, he's, he's having these experience tests now. It's the type of fight that Dubois needed, you know, a, Christ, a Christine Hammer or someone like that to, to help him get up through the rankings you know, and build himself up against a better opponent. So, you know, it's, it's only good that he's fighting these people. And uh, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of fights out there. I was looking on the rankings before and thinking, looking at people who, who make sense, um, the likes of like, Tom Schwartz, maybe. Someone who's fought, gone up against Fury. I know he's not the, the best, yeah. the best name in the business, but you know he's fought against Fury and he was he's only lost once, so that's a decent fight for him. European clash there. Um, Charles Martin is really high rank. He's, he's like ranked number two in one of the belts. I mean, obviously, I don't know if he wants to, you know, <laughs> relinquish his position that easily by fighting Tony because I think Tony could beat him, but still think that's another great fight because he, he's been in the ring with good, you know, with good fighters. Uh, Bryant Jennings as well. He's lost four times now, and he could do with if you know if for Brian Jennings beating Tony Oka puts him back in the frame of a bigger fight. So that makes sense, and he's always game. And um, even you know Ajit Kabiel as well, you know the unbeaten, the unbeaten fighter who was you know yeah. rumored to fight Fury as well. So that he's unbeaten. So I mean, they're, they're, I think they're good clashes. I think they're the European level clashes that he should be looking to take before he jumps up to you know find that the higher echelons of the game, but. Yeah, what do you think yeah. of those fights? Those fights seem seem fairly decent, don't they? Three, so there'd be three that I would have picked out yet. Um, there's a few others at that level, isn't there? Hellenius, people like that. I think though, I, I think they need to get him over to America soon because he's had all of his eight fights in France, hasn't he? Yeah. And I think if he gets yeah. over to America, that process of saying we were saying three or four fights. Two big wins there, and he can elevate himself massively. I think it'd be get him over to America, get good level opponents like Hammer, and if he beats him, he's making a big statement. I do look back on his career now, and when he was out, when he was out banned, imagine if he doesn't lose twelve months with the lockdown and the ban. He might have had his eyes on the Joe Joyce, uh, the Bois winner, but I think it's too early for him yet. Yeah, I think so too. Um, he's got, he's got, yeah, he's got to get his stock higher in America. A couple of knockout wins over there sh- uh, quickly gets you up there. And the American fighters, you know, the likes of like yeah. Charles Martin, your Gerald Washington, Hellenius, Kawanakis, these these sort of people, you they're relatively well known in America now. So yeah, finding people like that, be yeah. a decent step up and uh, get his name out there. So yeah, definitely big twenty twenty one for him coming up. Um, another big name he fought on Friday night uh, was Danny Jacobs against. Gabriel Rosado, um, it was an awful fight, <laughs> to put it put it plainly. <laughs> Even Eddie Herman called it, you know, it was an absolute awful fight. From the build-up, it was quite, it's a lot of beef, you know, they were giving each other quite a lot, they are giving it the big in, but they got in the ring and they just, 
I thought Danny Jacobs just didn't want to throw any punches and Rosala just sort of ran around him. And in the end, it was a split decision win for, for Danny Jacobs. But I thought it was a complete mismatch on paper because Rosado's lost, you know, 10 or 12 times. Um, but I thought he boxed pretty well to us in the highlights. He kept his distance and it probably feels quite bad that he's not. If he, he Like Eddie Hearn said in an, on one of his interviews, he said if he'd gone for it in the last few rounds, Rosado and won the last three rounds convincingly, he might have won the whole fight. And I think Danny Jacobs needs to count himself very lucky yeah. because he's a world-class fighter. And I think he needs, I think he can be, he's going to be in big fights very soon because he's a free agent now at 33 years old and lost three times, gone the distance of Canelo and Triple G twice. Um, I think there's a lot of big fights out there for him, but in terms of that performance, you think he got, he got away with one there? I thought it was, it was poor. He was openly disappointed in himself afterwards, I think. I think, it, to be honest, it, it probably underestimated Rosado. Saw it as uh, get a bit of ring rust on. But I was also disappointed with Rosado as well, because that was a big chance there. When someone underestimates you like that, if he could have grabbed the win there, that would have been the big moment of his career, but he just seemed to accept defeat almost. I'd still nearly robbed the victory. That's how bad Jacobs was on the night. But he got away with one, didn't he? He's won. I think, to be honest, now he will keep his uh, be keeping his eyes on Saunders Murray next uh, in a few weeks' time. So that maybe might be served next for him. But he really did get away one there. And if he box like that against the higher level opponents, then he'll definitely be getting beaten. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think just put it down to a. I don't know if he's fought in in the pandemic so far, but if he hasn't, then I think that we can just call that a, a tune up fight for now. Um, but I yeah. think in terms of Billy Joe Saunders' fight, I think Billy Joe's got his eye on the winners, Smith and, and Canelo. So maybe that one will get away from him. But there are, you know, he's in the top bracket of super middleweights. You know, he's 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 number two on box rec. So I think he can target big fights against Caleb Plant or David Benavidez, yeah. who are both unbeaten as well. And Caleb Plant got a world title as well. Is that right? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's IBF, isn't he? Right, yeah. So I feel like that's a huge... I think the only problem with that is the clashing with the PNP. Are they, the PNB boxes... And obviously, Jake, Jacob's been a free agent. Maybe if he signs there, he'd get them two fights. But I just think maybe with the matchroom connections, depending on Smith and Alvarez' date, and maybe Saunders might want to get him fighting before them. I think that maybe could happen first, but it just depend. Hey, I think what they're Jacob's all... just looking for, really. Yeah, they're all great clashes, though. I mean, I'd, I'd want to see every single one of those people fight in a round robin, to be honest. Yeah. They're all great clashes, so... Yeah, I think I think it'd be great to see him at 33. He's got, he's got to be targeting big fights now, and I think he could just systematically take them all off the list. I think win or lose, to be honest, because if he you know even if he loses against the, the Caleb panel, you know Benavidez, Billy Joe Saunders or Smith or Canelo will have a belt, so he can go and straight up and try and fight them again. So, so I think he's got plenty of chances. Um, yeah, just put this one down to a, a tune-up fight and move on to bigger things in 2021, like most people have done, really. Um, yeah, yeah, four decent fights for the weekend there. I mean, three professional ones, one exhibition, but I really fully enjoyed it all. Um, obviously, got a big weekend of boxing coming up as well. Three big fights this weekend, which we'll preview uh, later date. Um, but no, I enjoyed the weekend. Um, just, I just want to say you're enjoying the box at the moment, really, because we're getting a lot of shows thick and faster. I really am, mate. It's good to... Obviously, it's been a tough period for anyone, but when you've got such great fights on at your weekend, it just makes things so much better, doesn't it? It's been a good period. Good to have it back. Back to a bit of normality, even though there's no fans in there yet. But it doesn't stop these big fights from being made, and I'm really glad about that. Yeah, for sure. Can't wait for the ones coming up as well. So we'll call it there, and then we'll be back very soon, Thursday or Friday, with a podcast looking at the previews for Anthony R versus Linton Arthur, Errol Spence Jr. versus Danny Garcia, and I'm blanking. Who's the other one? <laughs> Who's the third one? Um... Oh, Billy Joe and Martin Murray. That's it. Is it that, um, is it that weekend or next weekend? It's this weekend, yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, so, so, three big fights. There you go. Clearly not big enough yeah. for you to remember, but yeah, no, um, definitely yeah. <laughs> three, these, three very good scraps this weekend. So, we'll get on to them as soon as possible. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.